You know, one of my fellow vocalists, Luther Vandross, sang, never too much, never too much. No? Okay, I'll keep it moving. But a little of what you like to do is good, but you can have too much of a good thing. A quote by Dick King Smith, pause. Now remember, I'm a teacher, not a speaker. Recently, I went to a dentist and I am over 40 years old and I was proud to be told that I still do not have any cavities. I've never had a cavity in my entire life. However, the dental hygienist pointed out one thing. He said that you brush your teeth too hard. And before I could even think about it even further, he said, no, you brush your teeth too hard. How was he able to determine that? He was able to just look at my gums and look at the enamel on my teeth. So he said, you're doing an excellent job of keeping your teeth clean and flossing and using the water pick, but you're brushing your teeth too hard. And what that does is that starts to wear down on the enamel, which protects your teeth. And it also could cause gum recession. And when that happens, that could lead to tooth sensitivity or potentially some type of gum disease. So what he recommended was for me to still, of course, brush my teeth. However, I need to soften up as I brush my teeth, get a softer bristle, use a sensitive toothpaste, or potentially use an electric toothbrush, which could help control just the amount of force that I apply to my teeth. So I need to make those changes. So yes, it's good that I brush, I floss, I use mouthwash, I use the water pick and take care of my teeth. But since I'm brushing it too hard, that's too much of an extreme. As I said earlier, a little of what you like to do will do you good, but you can have too much of a good thing. So a good thing could be rest, it could be food, it could be exercise, running, homework assignments, reading, the type of social interactions that we have, technology, celebrating your birthday or holidays, all of those are good things. However, we could go extreme with it. We could eat extremely well and stick to just broccoli and stick to spinach, which is good. However, we got to make sure that we're still getting all the other nutrition that we need. And we could go to the polar opposite. We could eat a bunch of ice cream and desserts. Either way, if I go extreme, either way, that could do me as a disservice. Doing too much running, I have been running every day for the last almost 450 days. But to be honest, I'm starting to feel a little bit of pain in my knee and when I looked it up, I could potentially be starting to suffer from something known as runner's knee, even though I'm not running an extremely long distance. However, I am running on a daily basis and have done so for over 450 days. So yes, there's so many benefits to running and exercise. However, too much of a good thing may not be best. Imagine having the best surprise birthday party ever. And then the very next day, surprise. And then the very next day, surprise! Over time, that surprise, it's gonna lose its impact. You're gonna become desensitized to the surprise. And that's just like with other aspects of our life. There are things we like to do that bring us pleasure. It could be interacting with our friends. It could be resting. It could be working on one of our favorite crafts. It could be celebrating different events. All of these things, once again, are good, but too much of a good thing could then be a detriment to us as individuals. We don't wanna become desensitized due to our extreme activity, our extreme lifestyle, our benefits of moderation. One of them is it increases our level of appreciation. If we don't have access to something every single day, when we do get it, we will appreciate it. A lot of us may love the nice sunny summer days. However, it is the storms that come every now and then, and then the temperature changes, and then the clouds and the sky turn gray. But when that sun comes back around, that's when we have that level of appreciation. Moderation also could reduce the complexity of life within itself, of your daily life. There are things we wanna do to make sure we're financially secure and mentally secure and physically fit. But when we go extreme with that, 
that's going to overcomplicate life. So moderation brings a little bit more simplicity back to our lifestyle. It also strengthens our inner sense of happiness because at the end of the day, we all truly want to be happy. We don't want to be stuck in the pursuit and actively, aggressively chasing after something. Eventually, we're going to want to stop. We're going to want to enjoy what it is we've acquired through our hard work and efforts. Living in moderation is the key to a successful, healthy, and joyful life. Remember, I'm a teacher, not a speaker, and I want you to have an amazing day.